I'd like to call the meeting to order the Board of Lumber County Commissioners. I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to start with a moment of silence. I'd like everyone to remember the uh, person that lost their life as a subcontractor on one of our jobs. Culberson? Here. Commissioner Paz? Here. Commissioner Smith is present. Commissioner Kempke? Here. And Commissioner Stevens. Uh, I'd like to open up public comment. Anyone from the public wishing to speak, please come forward and state your name. Joe Herring, Herring Surveying, 315 North 5th. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, recently, we've had conversation in a work session on Providing right away additional road easements for track splits and a process on how that's done without any benefit to the property owner compensation. It was later followed up with a conversation between myself, Public Works, Mark Lawford, and Planning and Zoning in a meeting and kind of determined, like, yeah, policy needs to be set where it's specific along with some other policy. And I know that we're not going to get to that without a new Public Works director coming in. I'd like to have that brought up, especially since we have, it's always been done for road improvements. We have the right of way in place when the roads can get hard surface, the county doesn't have to acquire it. But now we're doing dust abatement also. We're not acquiring road right away, we're just hard surfacing roads. So I think it's a good time to have this discussion and discuss that policy and see where it goes. I think it's been a good time to have a discussion years ago when we were grabbing it. I can oh, never get the anybody whole, up the whole to have track of ground instead of just where the home was being built. Correct. And that's what the kind of discussion was in the meeting was do we do it across the whole half mile and just on the 300 foot <coughs> section, or do we do it at all since we're hard surfing roads without taking any right away from the county residents anyway now? So I just would like to have that discussion and get that back on an agenda or a work session. Okay. That is it. Thank you. Thanks. Good point. Work session on land grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> right away acquisition. We'll call it. Yes, sir. Good morning, commissioners. Morning. On behalf of the community, I'd like to thank you for your work on behalf of our county. Thank you. My name is Tim Nye. Um, since you opened the meeting as you did, I'm sure you're probably aware of some of the things I'm going to talk about. Um, I live in the 3rd District, Fairmont Township. I believe, Commissioner Smith, you're, that's your district. I am. Um, I live on 158th Street, um, and I want to kind of bring some attention to that area where I've seen some issues developing and they continue to develop and I wanted to share with you so you at least because it sounds like there's not there's more to what I and what I'm talking about today that you're considering so I wanted to make sure that you at least heard my part of what I I noticed what's going on this is a road I got some pictures I'm going to share some pictures is that all right to pass them around as I yes sir okay I have pictures of the roadway and uh, it's pretty much a B flat roadway. I mean, it's it's a county. We're out in the country a little bit. Um, there are signages on both ends of that road, 158th Street. There's one uh, first sign is labeled uh, weight limit 10 tons, and the uh, second sign is commercial vehicle excluded. Those signs are on both ends on 158th 
and 24 Highway and 158th and 32. And so I'll share these with you. Uh, there is one last picture I'll show you. I happen to be taking these pictures two days, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, and this trucker seemed, happened to pull up right when I was taking the pictures, so that'd be interesting for you to look at these. But I'll share these with you first. I'm going to go through a series of uh, events that have happened that uh, over the course of a couple of years, I don't have all the pictures because of the, a lot more issues have happened than I've taken pictures of, but uh, these are just few. I had this in, de in December of 2016. This was uh, my wife and I woke up in the morning, heard the sound outside, and noticed what you're going to see. It's a vehicle for the people that are outside. It's a vehicle that's flipped over in the middle of our driveway. We heard that in the morning as a little girl. She just, well, I'll just go ahead and hand the pictures out. This was in December 16th. Sir, we're going to have a five minute limit on public okay. comment, so. Oh, on all of them? On all of them? Public comment is five minutes. Okay, well then I've got a lot to do. Uh, this is 2017 in June. This is a vehicle truck that was on the same stretch of road I just showed you that was ended up in our field uh, down in the ditch. He rode the, the, the side of the road down and you can see that this is a picture of the truck and the, the roadway is the same exact roadway over. And then April of this year, 2019, Here's another truck, a large truck carrying a uh, load on it, a 18 wheeler, and it was on the same stretch of road. He ended up in my yard this time. I was not home at the time, so the neighbor sent a picture of this one. And then finally, the uh, one that happened two days ago, uh, there's the pictures that show you the same stretch of road, same problem, and that gentleman lost his life. It's the first one I know that lost his life over, life over this. There's pictures you can see happening there. So, uh, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, the speed limit there is 40 mile an hour. Yes, sir. Do you know on this other accident that you're showing us, was, he, was there excessive speed involved? Well, I, I can't speak to the speed because I wasn't out there at the time. I can tell you the road is not built for the size vehicles that you're seeing on the roadway. But the is, speed is 40 mile an hour. It's been reduced quite a bit. I mean, we possibly could reduce the speed, but okay. but uh, the speed is seems to be the major well, thing that the county could impact. That and signs. Signs are big. I teach driver education. I teach kids driver education. And I try to make it important for the kids to understand that signs are how we communicate with the roadway, how you can expect what's coming up ahead. They usually roll their eyes, like I've seen happen right now. They roll their eyes back and say, you know what, this is not important to me. Yeah, it is important. Signs are very important. I'll show you, this is the one sign on that stretch of road. There's one 40 mile an hour sign, that's it. Nothing else. There's no shoulder on this road. It's really not made for that size vehicle. And there's some other signs there too. There is a sign three miles away in Wyandot County. It says shoulder drop off. I'd love to see at least that put there. That would help. Anything would help. But here's some pictures you can look at. The last sign I'll show you is a picture of a little girl. Her dad lost his life. There were four little girls, four, three girls, and a fiance that came that same night, Monday night, and Lake Blaze and Flowers, here's their sign that they left there. I thought that was pretty powerful for a sign. Of all the signs, that's probably the most powerful. I'll let the pictures speak for themselves. I'll sit down. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Knight. Are, are you Josh's dad? I am.
Anyone else from the public wishing to speak? Then we'll uh, close public comment and move on to administrative business. Mr. Locker. I don't have any administrative business per se, but we will be asking for an executive session at the end of the meeting today. Okay. So commissioners had time to look at this, uh, what I'd call a proclamation instead of a resolution. Would that be a correct proclamation? You have a chance to look at this? Yes. Does everyone agree to read this? Yeah, I'm glad you said the proclamation, though. I was asking. No, I'm calling it a proclamation. Okay. That was the only question I had. Is yeah, the only one I asked was whether or not it went something. through, David. So. Okay. All right. Well, I'll read the proclamation. Whereas the people of El Paso, Dayton, and Chicago, and many other communities have recently been impacted by mass shootings, and whereas the people of Lovemore County would like to publicly express our heartfelt grief and concern for the people impacted by these acts of violence, and whereas these types of shootings do not represent the true American values of patriotism, family, hard work, honesty, diversity of background, morality, and faith, and whereas we commend the men and women of law enforcement and all first responders for being true heroes, and whereas it is important for our communities to express heartfelt solidarity with all of our fellow Americans who are grieving at this time. Be it therefore resolved by the Board of Lovemore County Commissioners that the week of August 4th through the August 11th will be a week of mourning for the victims of the tragic shootings of, in our nation, calling on all people of goodwill to give thought, attention, and prayer to how such events can be prevented in the future and remembering all those who have been lost in this. Thank you. Put that together, Mr. Stevens. Commissioner Stevens. <sighs> so, has commissioners had any? There's no more administrative business, correct? At this time. All right. Then we'll move on to the consent agenda. Has commissioners had a chance to look at all the items on the consent agenda. Yes. Is there any questions, concerns? No one entertain a motion. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank. You. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion on the consent agenda? Having none, we'll be voting. Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. We're ready for public works. Our buildings and grounds. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We have a couple items before you this morning. I guess first up, uh, uh, we've got three items specifically now, and we'll also be around for the work session. The first item would be um, for Wilson and Company. We've got some additional work to authorize. Um, it's for additional survey work in support of the waterline relocation on the Eisenhower project for Loveworth Water Department. It is uh, in the amount of approximately $2,300. Um, it was being brought before the commissioner because um, I guess it was an unforeseen expense. Okay. And what about on the water district eight side of it? We're still in the process of trying to determine the, um, we're working out those details. Loveworth Water has given us a a preliminary estimate of the impacts, financial impacts to relocate uh, Water District 8. We are working with them to also put those into the schedule and get those addressed. We asked for the Water Department to provide a little more in-depth um, estimate of cost. But this is, this is to help them refine that estimate. Basically, we are going to show them exactly where our curb inlets will be on the Eisenhower project so that they can make sure that it does not impact their proposed Water line relocation. Oh, so Lever Water is going to move their own line. Uh, it's not going to be part of the project, the contractor. Well, they intend to move their own line. However, the cost of that relocation is the intent, their intent for it to be borne by the project. Right. But Water District 8 was going to turn it over to let the contractor put in the water line. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I've been in communication with council for Rural Water District Number 8. I've also attended Rural Water District Number 8 board meetings. Uh, 
the county and the rural water district have an agreement in principle as to uh, the allocation of expense of moving the water line, which will be borne by the county, uh, as well as the county being the responsible party for the physical relocation of the line. We've also made arrangements to uh, allow their engineer full review of both present plans and plans as the project proceeds. Uh, the one element I am waiting for uh, with respect to a formal agreement between Rural Water District Number 8 and this commission is a valid estimate of the cost of the relocation. Uh, the agreement that is being contemplated uh, starts the process. I would like to have some estimate that the county could be informed of as to the potential expense so that both parties are apprised as to what we're eventually looking at. Uh, I foresee a similar uh, agreement with respect to Leavenworth Rural or Leavenworth Water Department. And again, the missing element at this point in time is the estimated cost. But I believe uh, Leavenworth Water Department, again, is in principle an agreement that the line will be relocated. It's, at some point, it may be at their uh, direction through their engineer, but the cost would be borne by the project. So is there any, <clears throat> there's no time frame on Lemmer Water Department? We've informed them that we intend to continue to move the project forward and it was our intention to try to bid this at the end of 2019. So we've, we've made that very clear to Lemmer Water Department. Um, again, this is just a, 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 in my opinion, a small item that just needs to be addressed. We just really wanted to we're providing this data to them so that they can make a better set of plans, so they can get out. We, we, we want to make sure that we are continuing to impress upon them our desire to move this project forward. Well, Mike, I just had a quick question. What Do you know what the total value of the contract with Wilson and Company for the survey work was? I don't have that off the top of my head. It was, it was a fairly significant amount. <coughs> well, I just, it, I assumed it was, uh, a lot more than what's being asked for today at the same time since the number is probably small relative to the project size I'm kind of curious why what the change is that's so insignificant to create another you know twenty three hundred dollar change order on a project that I'm sure was ten or can, some other large multiple I can weigh in a little bit if you'd like I believe the contract is in excess of two hundred thousand dollars closer to two hundred fifty thousand I think just estimating um, and the in their contract it does not uh, they're not required to do construction staking which is what's been asked here uh, the construction staking the twenty three hundred dollars was asked by Lumworth water either they'll go contract it out and do the staking based on our plans Wilson's plans and send us a bill or we could have Wilson do it I think um, what uh, the public works director had decided was it would be better for Wilson our engineer to do the work instead of uh, having a third party come and do it that would then have to interpret our plans and we're still responsible for the cost. I was going to say so it's a re, it's a relocate or reallocation of the expense it was either going to be handled either Leavenworth Water was going to do it and bill and us or, right. okay. or we were going to have our <laughs> contractor do it and pay okay. it either way Got but it. it was outside the original scope of the project for Wilson and Company. Okay. Any other questions Mr. McMahon? Entertain motion to approve the expense. Motion to authorize the additional expenditure to Wilson and Company for survey, survey work not to exceed $2,300. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Voting? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, our second item today is, um, as you're aware, the east entrance to the courthouse. Uh, we currently have it uh, blocked. And... Um, <clears throat> We solicited um, an approval to remedy those changes in an emergency situation. So uh, we have a estimate from Mid-Continental Restoration Company to make those changes in the amount of $13,467. Aaron has been in contact with the, the company. They are a, a reputable company and they are currently doing, they do a lot of uh, restoration of structures such as this they are currently working on the Riverfront Community Center so um, it is our recommendation to affect those repairs 
with their estimate. Commissioners have any questions for Mr. Spickelmeyer or Mr. Hilton? Something that needs to be repaired sooner than later, especially for winter, or more starts falling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion. Motion to accept the estimate from Mid-Continental Restoration Company to repair the east entrance of the courthouse in an amount not to exceed $13,467. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the repairs? Uh, question on the budget. Where, like, where do you see that coming on the budget provision? As you can see on the... Um, we have funds allocated for uh, building maintenance and a capital reserve fund that we set aside. That's what okay. that was our intention to utilize that. Uh, we do realize that we need to budget a significant amount of money for restoration of this structure. Um, where that's part of what we discuss in the budget hearings is it will be included in our five-year plan. This is just simply accelerating part of that due to the hazard pending. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, part of CIP. Capital funds. Right. Got near miss. Yeah. Aaron, would you like to talk about the process and then also what we plan to do going forward? Sure. Uh, currently, right now, I'm working with uh, Spencer Troutman of Big Continental. He'll be out later today to finish up our uh, detailed walk of the outside of the building. What we're looking at is a budgetary number for. Uh, tuck point work as well as our water table work along the soffits and that of the building to restore it back then also working with Miss Abbott on acquiring historical grant money that is matching funds for the county so then that way we aren't bearing the total cost in a five-year plan what we're looking for is the emergency repair that we have currently right now along with breaking it into if we did it in a one-time cost for the outside of the building or if we broke it into the two ends, the front and the rear of the building, sp spacing it out with mobilization costs over the years. Either way, it's going to be a significant amount of money, but the building is in need of repair. It's in need of making sure that we keep our historical building looking as well as possible. Um, we'll be working with uh, Mid-Continental. This will be an object that will have to go out for bid because it's not an emergency. Um, situation but it is a limited amount of companies that do historical work so we'll be soliciting as many of those as possible but we're planning to put this into our budget over a five year if we mobilize multiple times to make sure the outside of the building gets taken care of any other questions I don't know if this is for Aaron or Mark or I, is the building current I mean I assume the buildings already on the historical correct. registry correct yes. which means yes it is that 50% allocation or match Correct. As I understand it, it's basically everything that's not FF&E. I mean, if, if anything structural whatsoever would apply, right? Correct. The goal, but it is still an application where you have to fill out your application. You have to bring forward your cost estimates as well. And then <coughs> funding-wise, hopefully you'll be selected. It's not almost guaranteed. It's, it's fairly certain that you'll be taken care of, but it's not a guarantee. It's a competitive process. But if you do it in phases, you can apply multiple times. Correct, sir. And then that way, the it's the burden the burden of it is split directly in half. Yeah. Aaron, you want to tell the timeline for this? The timeline for the emergency project um, would be a October November start. Is if we approved it today, it would be an October November start, as that would be where they slated us in. Project slated to take about two weeks, and then from that. They'll be working on the tuck pointing and the water table and then the underside of the awnings soffit so that it's repaired so we don't have any more pieces falling. November is the latest they can probably do it anyways. Correct. But with current projects that they had already had mm -hmm. bid and this one being one that they're putting in, normally companies like this bid 6 to 12 months out on their work and we're kind of trying to fit into one of their schedules. You wouldn't want a company that can show up tomorrow, I wouldn't think. If they could come and show up tomorrow, I don't know if we'd really no, want to. I don't them. think you would. <laughs> Any other questions? Aaron? Uh, I just had something I wanted to say, though. Um, yes, sir. And I thought about this as a joke at first, but I'm actually serious. I know uh, this 
won't work because there's a safety issue involved with repairing this. But what I would like to do is not do this repair if there wasn't a safety issue involved and board the window up and put the plywood up to send a message to all the people that think we're taking these budgets lightly. Maybe that would send a message to people to let them know, let them understand the seriousness we take these budgets to try to cut as many costs as we can. I don't know what other message to send. I thought that would be a good one. You know, front page of the paper, boarded up courthouse windows. <laughs> don't have the money. Yeah, but so piece of concrete fall on something. Exactly. You don't want to send that. Money. Exactly. Exactly. But you get my point. Right. It's, yeah. I do. Is that maybe that would be what it would take <clears throat> to get through people that say, you know, how come we didn't cut the mill levy? Well, we're trying. We're trying everything we can, and we're taking the budget very seriously. Maybe that would be the message they need to see. Not that it's a good idea. And the state needs to give us back our LABTR. We wouldn't even be having this conversation <laughs> if the state didn't take her. That's we right. have that conversation yep. on the 29th. That's August. right. Yep. We are going to have that conversation. In the Just my thought. Okay. Is there other questions from Aaron or, or Mike or Lauren? So, and I'll entertain a motion to approve it. The repair. Yeah, I think we're good. I, I think we're up to vote. Oh, that's right. Discussion. Okay, we did do that. So, voting. Aye. 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 <laughs> you were holding out for your plywood, wasn't you? <laughs> yep. So, anyways. Thanks, okay, sir. next one. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one other item, and it's kind of a, it's a little nebulous. Um, as you're aware, the County Road 1 hot in place recycle is taking place down. Uh, they started on the south, they're working north. There are three patch areas that are of a little bit of concern to the contractor. Um, the big concern is the fact that in order to do this process, they heat up the asphalt and then they scarify one inch and then they put back uh, the recycled material and then they put an inch of new material on top. So it, the bottom line is at the end of the day, we actually have a thicker road section, which is better. But over those three patches, there is some concern that when they hit it with their scarifier, that the patch is going to deteriorate. And so, um, in order to probably have a, a better, longer-term solution, they've offered to do some unit price work uh, at $170 a ton on the asphalt for installation of additional patching at those locations. They really won't know till they hit them with the scare fire, and that'll probably happen. I would have thought it would happen today, but with the rain, they may not be quite be doing the work. I haven't talked to them this morning. So, but at some point they're going to hit that pretty soon. And that's just something that they brought to our attention. They said they can actually execute without it, but they're curious as if we'd be willing to entertain that uh, solution. What's your recommendation? My initial recommendation was to just make it work, but at the same time, I don't want I don't want their we're aware that we built that road and not even in a year and a half later, we had three pretty big bumps and then we had to come out and fix it. So my thought is if we do it, let's do it right. Let's do it right the first time. Let's get this thing done and let's be able to just operate it. We should have 10 years of very serviceable quality roadway. I, I hate spending extra money. We made it over 10 on the first one, and that's when we had all the settlements from the overdigs on all the boxes and the bridge approach. We had to do a lot of work to, to keep it where work. it is. So now we're at the situation now we're like, let's let's get it, let's get it done right, and we shouldn't have to touch it. Now remember, this is this is an estimate. They don't. That would be the top end of the estimate. It, could be significantly less they would be willing to do so on a unit price basis uh, MHS is our inspector on the job they've done a lot of this stuff they're providing some quality uh, matter of fact Joe McPhee was actually out there himself oh really when I was out there yesterday morning so, so you're recommending we go ahead with this yes I'd recommend that we uh, we authorize uh, the staff to make that determination when we encounter that and understand that we may have an overrun of approximately up to forty-eight thousand dollars to prepare, provide additional patching over the three areas that settled after the first project. Mike, why do you think it is that uh, 
is a part of the original estimate and project. We knew that these issues and failures existed or concerns existed. Like, why is it once they're doing the work, it's coming to light? As though all I did was bid X amount of distance of road and never drove it or tried to forecast potential issues. Um, they actually had a unit price in there for some patching that, but it was a quantity that was much less than than we anticipate that we may encounter. And so they've reduced their unit pricing. So I don't know. Um, I, I don't have a good answer for you, Commissioner. It, it just seems like, and I'm not picking on any particular contractor, it seems like anymore the, the goal is win, win the bid, be as competitive as possible, and then ultimately I'm going to have change order. after change order. <laughs> and then we're stuck with what do we do? So we, need to, we have to do it right. The scope should be apples to apples in these bids. I'm, I, I guess um, I don't necessarily have an answer other than proposing a question to think about our, our policy, what it should be relative to change orders. If you're estimating a project, there's things that can happen under the surface, but this is over the surface. Like we, we knew these things existed. We've been messing with them for a decade. Driving over. This one's a little weird and unique because I, I think this actually came before the board in September of 2018, if I'm not mistaken, and then it got it, this has got a weird timeline. Here's what I know that we're doing right now. Aaron is having a mandatory walkthrough with all of his bidders on his next project. And we are identifying all of these things in the mandatory walkthrough. If you want to bid on our project, you show up to our meeting and we outline all of the weird things that we think might happen. That's, Good point. that is a great way to address, it, 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 it removes some of the uncertainty with some of that. On this one, I don't know how we got from point A to point B. I do know that the contractor can absolutely execute by the strict interpretation of the contract documents and put down exactly what he is contracted to do, or she, or they. So um, at this point, I'm looking out thinking, there's nothing more frustrating than having a brand new road with a bump in the middle of it because you got settlement that doesn't manifest itself until <laughs> A year or two later, which is what happened on County Road One, and we fixed them. But you know, a little bit of extra effort at this point will probably save us some headache down the road. Well, it's a good idea, Aaron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'd simply ask that it be noted in the record that County Road One was not constructed under the supervision or inspection standards of the county itself. Uh, County Road 1 was paid for by county sales tax, but the actual construction and management of that construction to include inspection was done by the Kansas Turnpike Authority. And one might also point out that, you know, the proper site preparation and excavating and compaction and all of those things, so it comes down to inspection as well to make certain that the preparation of the site before any material is laid has done been done properly so you know that's something that we and we could probably put on to the Kansas Turnpike Authority in their inspection but we don't know that well I've, but we need to make sure that we have good inspections and in the work done on our projects that there is they're there, very circumspect but there are or there are things that will happen right and the Kansas Turnpike has a very diligent level of inspection they have a full-time inspection staff. I'm sure that when they put the thing down, the magic numbers from the nuclear densometer gave them the right number. But things shift. Things happen. Things and, and you know, a lot of the reason that we do things the way we do, you know, there was a time when we would build the road and then let it winter for the simple fact that there is no harder uh, inspection criteria on you than Mother Nature will abuse your ascent if you have a harder one. Anyway. Even freezing, thawing, yeah. That is correct. That's the road is in really pretty good shape. It made it 13 years. Uh, and I, we I looked at the process yesterday. I think we're going to have a really good product when we're done. Seemed like yesterday when we went to the ribbon cutting. When it's cold stolen, day. Cold. It was a cold day. Cold day. And, and we are right. responsible JW Evans for the approaches on the turnpike. It's right. the county's responsibility, not KTA. Any other questions of public works on this? What's a scare fire? 
the machine it's doing It's a machine it. that they use Hot, to heat it. Big propane mm -hmm. tanks, knife it, yep. and then iron it back down, roll it back down. Got to go out and watch Recycle in place. I need now. <laughs> Got a video or a picture on my phone if you like to see it. Well, you can just drive down there. I said y'all drive down and see it. It's pretty cool. Visit the industrial park while you're there. Mm -hmm. This process is only going to be available on a limited number of roadways in Lemoore County because typically our roadways are not built with a full asphalt section. Like any of the new roadways, McIntyre, 147th Street, those all can use this process. Can you use it after you chip seal over it? They were very reluctant to uh, offer any kind of... <laughs> you, you really run the risk of... A traditional mill and overlay, absolutely, because you can take that wrap and, and do something else with it. Recycle that. But I meant, like, kind of road two. I would think, a, a, you know, again, a traditional mill and overlay, I think, is probably an acceptable solution for county road two. Yeah. And I, but I don't have any issue with like a two and three, like a two inch overlay, a two inch mill with a three inch overlay to give an extra inch of section. I think anytime you can make your road base and thicker. Is there any plans? I mean, I guess you should be asking us, but is there any plans to finish County Road 2? You know, we did the plans, acquired the right away, I believe even moved some utilities. Is the plan still on the shelf? Uh, those plans are so old that they, they would no longer be adequate to do the work. They're well over 10 years old. I mean, those were cut in, wasn't it 2006 or something? Uh, yes, there was plans to improve yeah. County Road 2 all the way to K32 and to make it look like the all the way, because right now it goes to Kansas Avenue and it's stopped, so. I'm trying to think what year that was. 2006. Yeah, I, I believe it was 2006. 2006 was the year that McIntyre Road was cut. It was supposed to have been surfaced then, too. But here we are in 2019 and we're driving on it. Here we are. Oh, five or six. So it's been a while. Yes, sir. Commissioner, the sales tax that funded that project was passed in the spring of 2005. I believe the design work and the, any additional right of way and utility easements would have taken place in 2006. Okay. Well, I know you, you worked on a lot of right of way acquisition, didn't you, on that? Quite enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew you'd remember. I'm ready for a motion. Yes, sir. I'll make a motion to authorize staff to execute a change order to repair the County Road 1 um, culvert patching. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Voting? Aye. 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 Thank you. And I have a question for Mr. Fickelmeyer. Okay. okay. Um, Who's in charge? I had a lady from Bear Lake last night was asking me about uh, tornado siren had been moved. Okay. Who's responsible for that, or who, does, who, who do we address that with? Chuck. Chuck Magaha is the emergency management coordinator. Is that through emergency management that yeah, makes he, the decision where those? He oversees all of the sirens. Okay. And, and your department then would actually do the physical no, work? No, yeah. no, no, we, we have, have nothing to do with it. Who does that? The state? The state contract. The state contract. The contract. Contract. Okay. Um, second question on 158, the question about uh, signage, and how, how's the decision about how many speed limit signs are located, and how's that made? We, we take, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at our sign and determine if we need additional signage. It's used, we use the guidelines that are established by the federal MUTCD, the Manual for Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Okay, so the members of the public are, are saying that there needs to be additional signage. Is that taken into account? Absolutely. We take a look at that and then we will, you know, we'll take it, we'll apply the engineering principles under the MUTCD and we will make a recommendation. Now, so there's, there's two or three different levels of signage. One is regulatory signage, one is warning signage. Warning signage we can handle at a departmental level. Regulatory signage, we can add regulatory signage as long as there's regulation that supports it. For instance, like adding an extra speed limit sign, we can put up an extra speed limit sign. Changing the speed limit actually requires an engineering study under the MUTCD and a regulatory action by the Board of County Commissioners to include 
So stop signs, yield signs, speed limit signs, the truck signs, anything that typically is a white sign is a regulatory sign. So those all require engineering study under the MUTCD uh, and under the law and guidelines. So if you, if you want to add a stop sign somewhere, then we have to do that. Now a stop ahead sign is simply based upon an engineering study that we do internally. We go out and we do counts and site distance analysis and all that stuff, and then we make a recommendation. And often, we just execute those changes. We added stop ahead signs at 166 like three months ago because we got a couple calls. We went out there, we ran traffic counts. We looked like, yeah, sure enough, we ought to do that. We did it. We executed that. So if we were going to lower the speed limit on that stretch of road, we'd have to do an engineering study yeah. and come back. And, and, that, and that would be something we would execute or we would ask to be done, or how would that, what would be the process? Well, um, if you were to, okay, if you identify a section of roadway that you think needs a different, we, you would tell us and we would can give you a recommendation on doing, but to change the speed limit, you have to have some sort of engineering justification to do so. You remember what year they lowered the speed limit on County Road 2? It was like 2004, 2000. It was right at the time that they, because when we redesigned the road from State the Avenue to Kansas yeah. Avenue, it went from 50 to 40. I know my parents lived out there at the time. And I got to meet a, a very professional sheriff's deputy one day, and um, <laughs> the uh, and so that road was designed for a 40 mile an hour speed limit sign. So we adjusted it. For instance, when we did County Road Seven, that was a 50. Now it's a 45 because when we did that section of we we changed it to 45. Um, County Road One was 50. Now it's 55 because we engineered the road for a 55 mile. An hour. So you can't arbitrarily change your speed limits. You can, though, do an engineering study, but you have to be able to justify the reasons for a speed limit change. It can't just be because I think so. It needs to have a valid reason for that. Right. And then you have to also understand that a speed limit study may give you results that you're not anticipating or liking. You know, the ideal way to set a speed limit is to determine your 85th percentile speed. And sometimes that's faster than your posted speed limit. And that causes another set of concerns that you have to be aware of. Because one of the biggest factors in um, accidents is a differential in speed. People that are exceeding a posted speed limit. And if a speed limit is posted artificially low, you could actually create additional safety hazards. So it's an interesting nuance of, of, of how it works. Mike, do, is there anything that exists? I realize we don't have current traffic counts on all roads, but is there a, a matrix or anything that exists that would have traffic counts that we could even work with? Uh, I don't know if it's the sheriff's department or whatever to figure out accidents reported. I mean, it'd be great to know traffic related to accidents as a we have that percentage. It's all there. We have that yeah. in GIA. You do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sheriff's well, that would be one. That would be one thing I would assume we'd always reference anytime there's Absolutely. concern That's or the, the public. And yep. I'll be the first to say I'm all for signage. The more of it, the better. If you have anything that'll make people read it and then obey it, I'm really into that. That's the, the truth. The obey it is the. That's the truth. The, now there's another <laughs> another <laughs> tricky nuance is the MUTCD has a clause signage. that you have to be very careful that you don't run afoul of, and that is. Over it is saturation right. Signs. If you post too many signs, it is determined that the excess of signs causes drivers I, to, so I get, how do you win you I can't win it's point. impossible yeah they get complacent but where does where does this matrix live i'm looking at that instead of yeah doesn't tim put together we, some we we maintain traffic counts on a periodic basis we've probably got 15 years worth of data now it's not the it's and not, accidents sheriff has that no, the sheriff keeps and the someone accident. marries them together and does the analysis mm -hmm. and that's in gis now I don't know how current it is. I don't know if they kept it up after I left, but well, it wasn't that long ago. Mm. It's in how there. about the the uh, uh, possibility of a stoplight at there by the Elm Grove Church on 158th? That's been reviewed several times. Are you talking about on K32? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it's a K dot. Well, I understand that traffic signals have a higher threshold of engineering requirement than even a stop sign. So anything on a state highway, the state maintains right now Lovemore County does not maintain any traffic signals and we would want to try to avoid a traffic signal unless all of the warrants are met and then I'm gonna say a horrible word that no one wants to hear but often when you have the warrants for a traffic signal 
you would be remiss if you did not consider that a roundabout is a viable alternative to a traffic signal that costs less and is safer. Even though not everybody likes them, and some people seem to get dizzy and confused. But I like roundabouts. Huh? I like roundabouts. Oh my, you're in a you're in a minority, but you and I are on the same team. <laughs> Only because I've seen where they function well. Now, they have to be built big enough. Baser doesn't build a roundabout big enough. You gotta build it big enough that you can execute your roundabout without in big truck traffic. Yes, and you have to be able to accommodate larger. Well, at that location, there's that hill, that, and there's been a number, and I'm sure this you has been looked at. You, you want the number that yeah. I've talked to several times that paid off? I'll give it to you. I mean, I, I really think we should put that on the table. It's a terrible intersection. Yeah, but yeah. do you think that a traffic signal is going to stop that any more than a four-way stop? I mean, I'm, I'm just... Which one? Yeah, I do. Why? Because then people accelerate, try to get through the yellow light when it's changing, or I mean, it, it, it's just well, people are going to run a red light. I'm just saying well, that that's I, I'm just saying a four-way stop. People are much more conscious if they're going to run it, they're going to run it. But they see it approaching, they stop. Which intersection, Mike? They're at 158 to 32. 32. No. By Grove Trail. They have a lot mm -hmm. of wrecks, accidents. Or... That's just. I, I just think right. that that intersection should be put on the table. I assure you KDOT is aware of the operation of all of their intersections. Um, they are executing an improvement at K32 and County Road 1 probably in the next two to three years. On I don't know of a more dangerous intersection myself. You slow the traffic well, down and a roundabout's a good way to do it. Review the matrix with me when we actually look at the statistics. Yeah. So I'm excited. Uh, maybe we need a work session on that uh -huh. so we can keep going. Um, KDOT is aware of all of They take very good data and they're very capable. So I've they, they, the, if, if there was a concern, they would have already. They're also been. very well funded, so let's take advantage of that. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? We can move on to the project management firm. So to get a stop sign put up, you don't need to get a petition of 1,500 signatures? I can't leave this with you. No. Just checking. Thank you, sir. No. You just need to have, you have to, there are stop sign warrants established. You just go through the. You just do, ask. You do your study, and then if it if it warrants a study. Matter of fact, we are currently looking at one right now internally. That after we did after we did an initial estimate, we realized mm, we need to do more data. We are going to. Mind, did he ever bring? Good to know. Just checking because some people thought you had to get a petition. No, the public should not petition for stop signs. It should be an engineering decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can. They can absolutely. If the public. Let's also understand that the public will bring things to our attention that we did not realize. This one that we're looking at currently was absolutely, we're like, ah, is it really like that? We went out, we ran traffic counts, we're like, ooh, we need to do more data, so we're going to actually put, we've got two level of traffic counter. We've got pneumatic tube counters that give us a pretty good snapshot ballpark, but then we've got radar counters that will actually give us the refined detail that we need to understand what's going on at the intersection. Our intention is to place those at the intersection during the school year because we want to make sure that we get what we consider the best traffic data we can. And then when we get that number, we will put it together and prepare a resolution for the Board of County Commissioners to establish a stop sign. Well, at least that's how it's supposed to work. Thank you. Appreciate we'll stick around for the, the project manager. Thanks, guys. Is that ours? Yep. Um, Previously, a few weeks ago, I had mentioned that I would like to um, engage a uh, firm to do handle project management services for the county, uh, specifically on the sales tax related projects, and then also um, provide some engineering oversight um, uh, for the items that require an in a sealed or a stamped engineering uh, review. Um, we solicited proposals. Um, received um, some really good responses actually had several to choose from put a committee together that included uh, two of the commissioners um, a couple of members from the public work staff and myself reviewed the proposals um, it came down to two firms and that uh, both um, again were very qualified and um, uh, from there we just reviewed the what would be the anticipated cost of using either of the firms um, and uh, Olson and Associates was selected 
and that is who we're recommending to engage for the project management services for the county, Lovemore County. Commissioners, have any questions? I have one question. Of the two uh, final candidates for the, the recommendation, which of the engineering firms had the greatest amount of experience in managing and engineering of road projects? Well, I think the um, for the principal, the primary contact, um, VSM was one of the was the other firm. Um, the owner for VSM would have been our primary contact. I believe from an experience standpoint, she would obviously have more years of, of experience than the primary contact for Olson. From a staff perspective, um, Olson Associates has a much larger staff and much more experience at the staff level. And how busy, comparatively speaking, how many projects is Olson Associates managing at this time? I have no idea. They're, they're, their firm has several thousand employees and um, but nationwide, so I would have no idea. And I likewise, I have no idea how many projects VSM is currently supervising. We just reviewed the resources that would be dedicated and how many hours they would be willing to allocate to our needs. So. And there was a sub substantial difference? No, I mean, both of them could meet the requirements as far as time. This came down to cost. We know how much time is going to be involved. So a $10, $20, $30 rate per hour differential is pretty substantial to us over time. Well, I agree, but I also agree, or I have, my experience has been that the cheapest is not always the best. I mean, they I'm weren't just, the cheapest. No, I'm, I'm just saying that the least expensive, I'm just saying that the, the, from what I have observed over the past six months as a commissioner, the, the lowest bidder is not always the most qualified or the best product. That, that's all I'm, that's all I have to say. Did you have objection to who they're putting forward? No, no, not an objection. Just I. Not going to say anything more. Commissioner, have any other questions? Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve Olson Associates to provide project management and engineering services to Limworth County as needed on an hourly basis as not to exceed 100000 a motion. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? Voting? Aye. 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 Nay. Aye. Commissioners, I'd ask for 15 minutes. Okay. And only one trip? One trip in 15 minutes, correct? <laughs> I'm, not in I'm not in control of that, Commissioner. Okay. I move that the board recess for a closed executive meeting for the discussion of possible litigation as justified by KSA 75-4319B2 for cons consultation with legal counsel for the board, which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship and that the board resume open meeting at 10.15 a.m. in the meeting room of the board. Present in the executive meeting will be Commissioners Culverson, Kaz, Shimke, Smith, Stephen, Senior County Counselor Dave Van Paris, and County Administrator Mark Lafferty. have a motion. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion on executive session? Voting? Aye. 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 Records show that we returned to regular session at 10:15. Executive session. Um, the topic was limited to potential 
uh, litigation and uh, no decisions were made. Mr. Chairman, members of this commission, I would ask that the board entertain a motion to authorize myself to retain outside counsel to review a matter of potential litigation involving the county. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion on retaining outside counsel? Voting? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Is there any other business for the board at this time before we go into our work session? Nothing for me. Um, I do want to get with you on uh, the KDOT wanting to get together in smaller groups. We'll get. I'll, I'll talk to you after that. And, and then I got a possibly 148th Street wants to come in and talk. Uh, Timberlakes. Timberlakes. Oh. oh. So street. before you leave, you may want to get your file. I know you have one. Prime uh, of that. Yes, sir. They want to possibly upgrade to county standards to take it over. So we'll try to get that on the agenda soon. But right now, we'll just go ahead and adjourn and go into our work session for sewer districts.